Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna try to recreate the Black Means Sashiko Denim. Now, this was requested on my Discord, so if you have any other requests of some denims you want me to try to recreate, hit me up on my Discord or on my Instagram at Julius Nathan. But the first thing I thought of when I saw these pants, I was like, damn, that's a lot of work. It looks like a culmination of like all the stuff I've been working on for the past like year and a half with like patchwork and darning and Sashiko stitching, all of that into one pair of pants. So it looks like a lot of work, so Let's get to work. So today we're working with a pair of Levi's 541s in a size 33-32. And as you can see, they're a little short on me. So that'll be the first adjustment I'll need to do. But first, I have to deconstruct the pants almost entirely since I'm going to be working on each piece individually. In order to separate the seams, I released the hems which gave me access to them and then removed the rivets at the top of the pants with some wire cutters. Again, my first adjustment is to extend the pants by adding in denim extensions. This doesn't really matter too much, but I ended up using some spare denim that were also 541s, so the colors almost matched the base denim I was using. After a few measurements, I decided to make the length of the extensions for the back panels 2.5 inches by 9.5 inches, and then the front panels 2.5 inches by 8 inches. But with this in mind, I measured and marked the outline of the extensions and cut them out. With the extension seam crease lined up to the pants hem crease, I sew them together with my sewing machine. The next step was figuring out the measurement of where the patchwork ends and making sure it's even on all four pant panels. For the patchwork, I used a bunch of spare denim fabrics from past projects. I tried to avoid using fabrics that were too similar in color to the base layer, but at the same time, not so different where it's really noticeable. Basically, they all have to blend well together. For example, something like red fabric, I wouldn't use it because it just stands out too much. Now that the prepping is done, it's time for the first grind darning all of the patches. I started off with the butt and coin pockets and then started applying them to the pant panels. My biggest concern for this part was the patches not being flush with the base layer. So to prevent this, I sewed a straight stitch around the edges of each patch so that I can keep it flat for when I started darning. All four panels finally done. One, two, and then two front panels. Just the back side a little bit, but bro, look at the spool. <laughs> That's already almost gone. But now we're finally done with the sewing machine. Now we start hand sewing. Now that the first grind is over, it was time to start the second one, but this time with Sashiko stitching. The stitches on the back on the back panels were all vertical, so I started off at the middle and drew a straight line down from the edge of the patchwork area to the bottom of the panel, and then used this as a guideline for when I started stitching. Okay, finish the second panel. Not gonna lie guys, kind of struggling. <laughs> Some back-to-back -back grinds kind of much, you know, and it's like, it's very repetitive. But uh, yeah, front two panels left. Let's get it. For the front panels, before I started sewing, since there's two designs on it, I measured and marked where the cutoff will be so I'll know where to stop and start. I'm about done hand sewing all of this stuff here with the sashiko stitch. The only things I have to do is a knee area here. 
Now on the reference picture, they have like a chain pattern kind of stitch. I don't know if I want to do that mainly because this is taking way too freaking long. I might instead just do like a bunch of like cross stitches. You know what I mean? A bunch of diagonal stitches like that and making like, you know, X's and stuff. Because honestly, I can't really be bothered. This is just taking way too freaking long. After so many hours where I honestly just stopped counting, all that was left to do was tie a knot at each ends of all the stitches. You may be wondering like, bro, why didn't you tie the knot when you were working on that stitch? And that's because I wanted to be able to smooth out the base layer denim, basically to be able to remove all of the scrunching up that happens when hand sewing. Also, after all of that, I wanted to show you guys how my hand sewing needle looks like. Definitely need a replacement now. For the waistband, to make sure it's aligned correctly, I hand sewed in some knots along the waistband to keep it in place with the pant panels for when I sewed it down with my sewing machine. The last and final step was to sew in the hems at the bottom to make the pants look a lot more clean because honestly I'm not really feeling the whole raw edges anymore. But yeah, we're done. That project took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. Like I thought it was gonna take maybe, I don't know, 30 hours. But I spent around like 20 to 25 hours just for the patchwork darning section of it. And then the hand sewing part, that took probably like 30 hours or something like that. I'd say I'm pretty patient when it comes to this DIYing stuff, right? Like the grind is fine. 20 hours for darning, cool, cool with that. But I guess I realized or found out about myself that when it's like back to back grinds and they're both 20 plus hours each, Ooh, that was definitely a mental struggle for me. <laughs> there were so many times where I was like, I don't feel like working on this thing because it's so repetitive, so redundant, especially the hand sewing section of it. But you know, I realized no one else is gonna finish it for me. It's only me over here, right? So gotta get the work done. Now, what would I rate these? Straight up 11 out of 10, even 12 out of 10. There are a couple of things that I would change, but I don't think that they would diminish the rating I give them. For one, I should have taken into account that the hand sewing as well as the darning it would shrink the panels. So basically the length of them became a little bit shorter. And even though I added extensions, I should have taken that into account that they would shrink. So I should have added like one or two inches to that extension. But in the end, I think it turned out pretty good how it is right now. Very clean looking. And honestly, the overall look with the patches, the darning, the sashiko stitches, it all just flows well together when it comes to the color. So I think how it is now works perfectly. But you know, as much as I like these pants, I probably won't ever recreate them ever again because of just the fact that they take way too freaking long. Now, if I did have like a saddle stitch machine, that may make sashiko stitchings very well and it'll be a lot quicker and it won't shrink the fabric either, then I'll probably recreate these pants. But that costs way too much money, so yeah, I probably won't ever make these again. But anyways, hope you guys liked how the pants turned out. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button as well. Join my Discord if you want to meet really chill people who are also into this DIYing stuff. If you want to keep up to date with what I'm working on, follow me on my Instagram at Julius Nathan. I usually post updates on my story. They all saw it first. They saw the progress. They saw the final outcome at Julius Nathan. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.